Check it. We're live. All right. Hello, everybody. It's Ben and Justin Bright up here again, the developers of JU Linux. How is everybody doing this fine, sunny, warm Wednesday afternoon? I hope everybody's having a marvelous week. We're getting there, people. So uh, I hope everyone, like I said, is having a marvelous day. I felt today that Justin and I could run you guys through a full system setup and demo of JU Linux 17, our latest release. So my thought was, you know, Justin's done some amazing, great tutorials on JU Linux in the past, but I figured maybe this time we could go through and just sort of show you what it takes to get through an entire system setup of JU Linux. And if you do need support, we will take that into consideration, but I figured this would be the easiest way to sort of give you like a test on what to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this up. And while this is booting, uh, Justin, why don't you kind of tell them, you know, sort of why and how just so easy it is to do G Linux and what sort of the purposes and all those sorts of things and why somebody would want to transition away from Mac OS or Windows or something like that. Okay, and maybe I can show them where to download it too. Right now, by the okay. way, your screen sharing is off. I don't know if it's because it's rebooting or what's oh, happening. Oh, hold on, let me. I just thought I'd let you let you know. Yeah. He is using the Windows 10 virus to uh, to virus. do this today. <laughs> yeah, he's I would using. say that uh, I would say that Linux is less of a virus type deal than a Windows install, but you know that's too sure, I guess. All right, yeah, put Windows in the recycle bin and switch to just yeah. use Linux today. All right, so yeah, JU Linux, oh, why is it better? Yeah. Why is it faster? What's great? Well, first, let me give you some cons. I mean, because I'm an honest guy, let me give you some cons. Uh, we got a x ray CT scan back the other day for my grandma. We wanted to look at it on uh, JU Linux, and we couldn't do it. it, it wouldn't work. So, you know, there are some pros and cons. If we got proprietary software, and sometimes it just doesn't work. But the thing is, is that for the most part, JLinux, it runs faster. It's got web browsers. You can install yeah. Steam and video games and just all kinds of crazy fun stuff. And you can get your work done, edit videos and all that. I will admit, I have a separate hard drive to avoid cross-contamination with the Windows 10 spyware installed on my computer. Uh, you know, just in case I want to use uh, some software people have sent me to try out, like... Um, uh, Powered Cyberlink Power Director. It's like an awesome, Oops, you know, sorry. video yeah. editing suite, but it's complicated. I'd rather use KDN Live or OpenShot or something like that because it's just uh, not as complicated. Now you see Ben here; he's going through the installation process. He clicked. Uh, yeah, the icon I desktop. did not take the uh, install third-party software because that's included in the finish install that we wrote. And you if I that click, way. well, I'm I'm gonna take it because you know some people may have graphics or third-party Wi-Fi drivers that they need, and this should yes. close up. However, yes. people, if you come, if I minimize this down, you'll see that we have an install drivers package on the desktop that will grab your third-party, like, NVIDIA drivers or Wi-Fi drivers or whatever driver that the install program here does not automatically grab. Just wanted to point that out. So after that screen, it asks you what you want to do. Now, one important note here. I would not tick this LVM thing unless you know what the heck you're doing. Right. Not encrypt your hard drive unless you know what you're doing. The easiest thing to do, now if you have Windows, there will be an extra option here just to split the two in half. If you want to do that, it's a little bit more complicated. So the easiest thing to do would be erase disk and install JE Linux. However, one minor word of warning back up your stuff justin nor i will be held responsible if you erase your stuff off your drive seriously it doesn't take but a couple minutes back up your stuff then go through this process and it's not <laughs> just that it's not just that like right here where you're at this screen that ben's got up um, if it doesn't give you the option to dual boot uh, Windows and Linux and you know you can do it, you can go to something else 
and you can you manually resize your drive and everything. Now, if you're running Windows 10 or Windows 8, you may have to do a trick because Windows purposely corrupts its own partitions to avoid Linux having contact with it. And so if you reboot uh, Windows 10, at least at this time, they might change it, but you reboot Windows 10 and you shut the computer off and then so you don't let it reboot and then, so then uh, not shut down, but restart. Then when it comes up, Linux will have access and it can mess with the partitions and the drives and everything and then you can do this. So if you're going to install JLinux 17 or the newer version or whatever on a Windows 10 and you want to do a boot, the best thing to do is hit restart on Windows 10, power off the computer as soon as it's ready to restart, since it's you know down and, and, and ready to power off, then boot from the JLinux and install it that way and you should be able to select something else if you need to. Yeah. Uh, to do that, so yeah, okay. So in this case, we don't have a Windows partition or drive or anything like that. So we're just going to click the erase and install button. So we're going to click continue. It's going to yep. make our partitions, and this will obviously take a few minutes or less to install. Yep, and you select your time zone, which is highly good idea because if you don't select yeah. your time zone and you're not uh, honest... the uh, Louisville, Kentucky standard time zone. So I'm gonna grab that one because that's where I live. I usually just click on the map. Yeah, I type it in personally, but your name. I'm gonna make it owner. I'm gonna keep it on. I'm gonna call this com this virtual computer Ju Linux. Seventeen. <laughs> 17 tests and now here's the tricky part the password i will say from personal experience you want to have a really super secure password like a couple of characters at least i usually just make it owner when i do these youtube videos but don't do and, that and you want to check login automatically because if you don't and you know i mean if you're a guy that you're worried about your computer you're paranoid you don't want other people logging in go ahead and hit require password but yeah. if you just want to use your computer, you want to turn it on, you don't want to have to log in or type in any passcode, just log in automatically. Yeah, that's how I usually do it. I mean, I rarely ever leave the house unless I absolutely have to. If I'm, like, fixing someone's computer or whatever, um, I usually don't check this. But if I am just sitting at home not doing anything, I take that. So anyway, continue. Yep. And, and now it's going to run. So... We now, will. right now, during the installation, you notice that the desktop's actually smaller on his uh, virtual machine. Um, if that continues after rebooting, you install the uh, the guest editions on the virtual box, and then you're you're good to go. Yeah, and I will demonstrate how we do that once this is done. If it's necessary, yes. Yes. It may not be necessary. Right, because the later Linux kernels will automatically show that after the reboot with VirtualBox and certain distros like Arch uh, distros based around that and maybe some other more advanced Linux systems do have problems with that. Mm -hmm. However, if they, if they have pushed out a patch to fix that, so hopefully... Um, Hopefully that won't happen, but hopefully it'll just work and full screen and everything like that will be okay. But, you know, if not, we will install the VirtualBox Guest Editions. So for those of you who game on your computer, let's talk about that just a little bit. So first of all, we talked about Steam earlier. The other thing is there's a package called Play on Linux, or you can use Wine or whatever you want to, yeah. and it allows you to run some Windows programs and games and things directly on Linux without a problem because Wine stands for Wine is not an emulator. You can also run emulators on Linux for uh, several gaming platforms like uh, I think the Wii and all kinds of other consoles and yeah. emulate games. But, um, and a lot of people, if you like to emulate, you know, run emulators on your computer, uh, you can run RetroArch on, on JLinux 17. It's available. Yeah. You can download it, install it. Uh, in fact, it's available in the repositories uh, through the, uh, what's that store called in there, the, the Software Boutique. Um, I don't know if it's in Synaptic. I know you can add it to Synaptic, but I don't know if it's in it. Huh. I can look at that once the distribution reboots into the yeah. uh, desktop, but I 
would strongly, I will try to show if we have time, um, the, uh, the RetroArch app just sort of give people an idea, but we'll see where we end up. I will. So, try to, uh, so whether you're doing, you know, gaming, video editing, audio editing, office work, he's got LibreOffice, whatever. And by the way, in this version, LibreOffice is set up by default to save in Microsoft formats. And the reason is, is because uh, a lot of people will do their work in LibreOffice or OpenOffice on a computer. They'll want to send their work to a friend and then their friend is using Microsoft and the Microsoft will not open uh, the OpenOffice default format. Oh. So we save Microsoft so that people that are using Microsoft can open the documents and we try to save in DOC instead of the XML. You can yeah. save in the XML, it does that too. Yes. And all our um, Office products on here that are using LibreOffice, because that's what a lot of people want to use if they're using the system, or any Linux system for that matter, they usually save it in LibreOffice, which is fine. So I, um, I highly recommend, I highly recommend that you use LibreOffice and not install MS Office in Wine because I've tried that and it it doesn't work very well. So. No, it does not. <sighs> and what works worse than Microsoft Office is Microsoft Works. Because uh, Microsoft Works or, doesn't work. Microsoft Works is old, it's crap. <laughs> it's just you know it, it runs like dog crap. Put it that way. That's the easiest cleanest way I can put it. So well even when it does work properly, other programs don't open it usually. Like the formatting right. that they use right. it's just the formatting on it is just junk. So honestly, if even if I'm like on Windows, you know, the junk like that, I usually just run open office even have do what I have to do that. So. Facebook is not allowing me to share this uh, this live stream for some reason it's the Facebook censorship police they're, they're doing their thing. Yeah, I don't know why. Maybe I can share it on my own timeline or so. I don't know. I wanted to share it on the J Linux page, but it's uh. Yeah, I what, maybe if I can share it. Um, maybe if I can share it on my page, then I can post it to the J Linux page. We'll see. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. There it is. I'm going to share it. I'm going to share on the page and see what happens on a page you manage we'll do it that way yeah, there we go Linux, Facebook. Yeah. and I can share it in groups too in a group Linux yeah anyway guys um so if you don't know the backstory, the why Justin hired me to help him, hired you. Uh, I was <laughs> no, I mean why he wanted me to help was uh, maybe it would be better if he told you why. But uh, what um, I'll give you kind of the introduction. So the point was I we met um, on Talk Shoe on his radio show years ago. He was. I just stumbled upon it. I didn't know what it was about, what anything Linux-wise was. I was. I told him I was completely new, and uh, basically he kind of gave me a rough scenario of what Linux was. But I still didn't know what the heck I was doing. I sort of just, you know, was completely new to Linux at that time, like I said, and then. Uh, I'll let Justin kind of give you an overshadow from there. Well, as far as this particular version, um, he ben I mean, like, I mean, like, tell him about you know not just this version, but basically the reason why you wanted my help in the beginning. Well, mainly because I wanted people's feedback. I mean, one of the number one things with Ju Linux is trying to figure out what. A Windows user switching to Linux or Mac user, whatever, what is it that they want to see? What is it they want to know? I mean, it used to be people would freak out because there wasn't a menu button in the lower left hand corner, like, you know, on Windows XP. And so just those subtle little things, adding those made 
it a lot easier. And to do a little bit of history, there was Lindos and Linspire and some other ones, and I think there's still some other ones out there, uh, React OS and stuff. And they were trying, not I'm not including React OS in this, but they were trying to make Linux distributions that looked and acted like Windows, but they took it too far and they got sued by Microsoft. Now, everything here in JLinux as far as the graphics that um, I'm using are original. They're not Microsoft graphics. And so we also are protected by the Open Invention Network. You can see the badge on our website at justislinux.com. So we're protected by them. And so we don't have any, that's why we're still doing things and they're not. Um, but as far as, yeah, we, we got started on this um, and it's just mainly about the feedback. Ben has given me good feedback. Uh, when we did the last one, there were some things that he knew that I either forgot about or didn't know in Firefox because we were making some adjustments to Firefox and stuff and helped out with that. And uh, basically he cloned. Oh, there we go. It says continue testing or restarting now. All right. So I'm going to reboot it now. But yeah, the story behind me coming to help him out was the fact that I have done so many Linux distros, even my own from scratch a couple times, and he knows this. Oh, yeah. And I'm really super smart. I like with Linux. I mean. Ready I've to got, reboot. Yeah. Just press enter. Yeah. Remove the disk and press enter. That's one mistake I always make. I mean, sure, I'm a heck of a good Linux enthusiast, but sometimes every, even enthusiasts like me make common simple mistakes but either if way if you want to I, remove the disk you go to devices like he was yeah, doing there I did that. I did, it did that for me but anyway well it looks like i was right as usual that the uh guest editions worked out of the box so if you try this guys in a vm before you try it out on a real computer it will show you that it works out of the box with your drivers so Hooray. all right so anyway the uh as you see on the desktop, we have an add remove software, your user directory, control center, drivers, blah, blah, blah. So, um, it's I will... time to install the extras. All right. So let's click the install JLinux extras icon. Now, I'm going to warn you guys, if you're not used to the terminal, watch this how-to video. Seriously. Yes. Yes. The terminal is not your enemy it's not the devil it's not something to be scared of just take a deep breath and follow my lead so we press yes enter then now one word of warning do not i repeat do not you know what this is one thing here is the password will be invisible don't worry it's taking it just don't worry. So we type in our user password here. Boom. Okay. So just type in your password. It's going to be invisible. But that's for security reasons. Then we press Y again. And there's going to be a lot of that. So now it's downloading VLC for video editing, for video playback. So the most important thing to know with Mr. Terminal here is you'll see some things where it'll say do okay to continue or yes and no. And you have to yeah. use this magical key on your keyboard called the tab key. It's usually yeah. on the left-hand side above caps lock and shift and control. And if you press that, it will let you select the next thing. And then you can just enter to continue. Yeah. And Ben will demonstrate that here. I'll be quiet when it comes sure. to that so you're seeing his screen and not me or something. And right. uh, we will we will show how that is, how that's done. But the other things we can talk about are the simple scan. It has the simple scan there. And why is it there? Well, it's there because people ask me all the time, they install Linux and the, or I install my computer, like, how do I scan a document? Well, you use simple scan. And as long as you've set up the printer in your control center there or under the menu, um, it should see it and scan. Now, there is a website, and I think it's called linuxprinting.org. You can search for it on Mr. Google. And it will tell you if your scanner works with Linux. It may not know 100%, but it's pretty good. And if your printer that you are considering buying or the one you already own does not work with Linux at all, it will say paperweight. And that means that you can put it in front of your door and use it to hold your door open because it will not work with Linux. But the more printers, I think, work with Linux than Windows because 
Linux is reverse compatible. So all of the old drivers they've made for the old printers, as far as I know, still work with the new versions of Linux. Whereas with Windows, you have to have a Windows 10 driver for Windows 10. You might be able to use a Windows 7 driver in a Windows 10, but you pretty much have to have the newer version of the driver. And if they don't make the newer version of the driver for Windows 10, then your printer is a paperweight. And you, yeah. must, you, know, you have to go buy a new one. So, All right. But with Linux, guys, you don't have to worry about that. Not All as you much, have no. to do, Right. Not, you don't have to worry about that as bad because, like Justin said, you can... However, pull down whatever printer driver you need or want, and it should pretty much work. It should. Yeah, um, it doesn't, should doesn't mean that it will. All you can do is really play around with it and try it. That's all there is to it. I there mean, are going to be more tedious, but it should be okay as long as you don't have a problem. Now, just like with Windows, some drivers made by some hardware manufacturers don't work, but you don't usually run into that. The other thing is, is if you install the Hewlett Packard driver on uh, Linux, there's one huge benefit to doing it in Windows, and that is, is that in Linux, it doesn't pop up things telling you to buy more ink or uh, advertisements or anything like that. All you get is the little HP logo in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen like I have on my computer in fact if i shared my desktop i could i could show people um and uh yeah i'll go ahead and share really quick so this is j linux you can see here in the lower right hand corner on mine um we got this hp logo here and uh it, it does this and i don't have all these weird problems if i can stop sharing my my yeah i'm not sharing my screen anymore but um Anyway, you don't have all those weird Windows problems with the HP Control Center trying to drive yeah. you insane. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so yeah, this is downloading all our stock programs that we include with this finish install program. Mm -hmm. um, while that's going, I'm going to show you what is installed without it. So. Uh, we have Chromium, which is like the non-Google branded Google Chrome, um, and then we have Firefox. Well, it's it's the open source version of yeah, Google Chrome. It's, it's still Chrome, yeah. it's still Google Google, but you know. Yeah, it's just their open source browser. We have the latest version of Firefox, the latest SeaMonkey, Thunderbird for email transmission. Then under Office, like Justin explained, we have. Libre Office, the full suite, so that should take care of your school or work needs and a dictionary and a, a drill documents. Then under Senate Video, we have VLC, which just got installed, um, Rhythmbox, Cheese, and Brazero for your media needs. Oh, now, the, another, another uh, like if VLC doesn't work for you for some reason, um, uh, there's a, a media player called Parole Media Player, and it seems to be really universal. I just thought I'd throw that in there. Yeah, Parole Media Player is nice. That's not a bad media player. I personally would either use um, Spotify, uh, maybe Clementine, something that doesn't require a lot to get installed, but that's just me. And then... Uh, you know, or you can use SM Player. Doesn't matter. Under Admin, we have Pink Guy Builder, which we use to make this distro. Or you can use it for any other reason you want. Network Login Window <sighs> Printer, uh, which we'll take a look at in a bit once all this is done. Software Boutique, Software Updater, Sour Updis Creator, Synaptic Package Manager, which we'll get into in a little bit. Time and date, User Groups, and Welcome. Now, there's one thing uh, yeah. that we should also mention under the Internet, if you want to go to the Internet again. And that yeah. is Mr. Mozilla SeaMonkey, because it is not just a web browser. It also performs the same function as Mozilla Thunderbird, if you want it to. And it has a composer, an HTML editor, which I actually use for the website. Now, let's switch over to Ben so he can show you how to use the magic tab key. Yeah. Now, the importance of these Microsoft fonts is, say, like, um, actually, let Justin explain the importance of these before I move on, if he can. <laughs> so hit the tab key and show them. Okay. okay. Whoa, 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 okay, you went forward too quick. So he hit the tab key. Now now he hits the left arrow key. Yep, See how, it's, how he's controlling where 
the selection is, and then enter continuous. All right. Now, the ports of those fonts, I'm not really familiar with, so I'll, I'll let Justin kind of explain it for us. Okay, so for some Microsoft programs you run on Wine or even Windows programs or Linux programs, uh, basically you're installing uh, Microsoft core fonts. And there are some programs out there which either won't function correctly or they will refuse to install without those Microsoft core fonts. Um, and so when you're doing Wine and Play on Linux and all these other things, uh, Wine Tricks and all that, and I assume Play on Linux is going to install Wine Tricks. I think I left it in. Yeah, it's going yeah, to finish it's install, install yeah. Wine Tricks. But um, now I don't know if we installed Live DVD. That might have to be installed. And that like might the have to be uh, installed after the finish install is finished. Pearl Media Player lets you like watch pretty much anything as long as you have a codec installed for it. I have had issues with VLC. You know, VLC sometimes it goes nuts when I try to open certain files, and I don't really seem to have that problem with the Pearl Media Player. Oh no, it's an error. That's yeah, okay. I can record it. It's fine. All right. So the errors will go away once we've rebooted after the finish install. I discovered that. So if you if you're experiencing uh -huh. errors, they should go away. Once you've completed the finish install and rebooted. Uh, yeah, so all this stuff is pretty much essential for a lot of users. That's the main reason that we have this. Finish yes. Nowadays, you don't have to do this to watch YouTube videos because of the HTML5 and all that other fun stuff. But there are a lot of plugins and things. It's like if you want to play video games on Facebook or something, you know, like Total Domination yeah. or something like or that. Or if, uh, if you want to install a Windows app, something like that. You've got to have these these plugins, otherwise it won't work. But yeah. with Google Chrome, you can watch Netflix. Not Chromium, but Chrome. You can watch Netflix. You can do, uh, was it Amazon Video? And those extra ones, you don't have, you can use any browser as far as I know for like, um, What's the service called? Uh, Pure Flix and YouTube and, you know, other ones. But Netflix and Amazon Prime, which I don't endorse either of those two. Oh. Um, you know, okay, here we go. It's asking about Chrome. So yeah. you, why to continue and press enter to install Google Chrome? Yeah, so Google Chrome, yes, we're going to do that. Now, one word about Chrome, guys. If you're using our 32-bit release, this prompt will fail and it'll give you an error. Yes. Pay it no mind, just ignore it, and you can just get Chromium in the package. Well, it's already included. It's already included. Right. But see, in 32-bit... So in 32-bit, you're gonna, just going to have to live with Chromium and not Google Chrome Stable. Unfortunately, because, like I said, Chrome has dropped 32-bit support. Completely. Yes, and there are lots of other Linux distributions that are dropping 32-bit support as well. Right. And so JLinux 17 is one of the few Linux distributions that still does 32-bit oh. support in 2018, thanks to right. Ben. All thanks right. to Ben. And uh, I actually run our 32-bit version on my computer, which was thankfully strong enough to build this from Ubuntu Mate. So... Um, and in case you were wondering, yes, this comp this Linux was built from Ubuntu Mate. So anyway, it says, do you want to donate? I'm going to hit no on this, but if you guys do download this, we do ask that you at least try and donate some amount of money to us. Anyway, we'll press no on this for right now. And, and then it's going to tell you to, to, what is it? What is the video? Yeah, I forget. Video. Um, and there's uh, an ad. Uh, Not the ads. No. It says to go to a music video. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Start up. Stupid ad. Get out of here. It's going to tell you to enjoy the software. That's right. It's going to tell you to enjoy the software. All right. So, there's our finish installer done. So, yeah. Now, there are other ways to support J Linux, though, besides giving a direct donation. Yeah. If you'll see all kinds of bookmarks, as he just had the Firefox and all that open. And oh. it is a good time to install updates, but we might want to reboot first because it, yeah, I think... Let me reboot the machine. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. No, you're going to want to do it because it hasn't installed a new kernel. I was thinking it installed yeah, a new kernel. It's installing a whole bunch of new things, so... Yeah, yeah let's yeah, let it do let's, that. Uh, let's let it run, and uh, we won't touch it unless 
some manual intervention is required. So, but anyways, what was I trying to say? Oh yes, so there's all kinds of bookmarks in most of the browsers except Google Chrome, and you can import yeah. them if you'd like to. And if you yeah. click those or the links in the description of this video right here, uh, they will you will be below. supporting Ju Linux. If you watch the YouTube videos on the Unboxing Authority YouTube channel, you will be supporting Ju Linux. Anything you do that helps us get more revenue from watching videos or from buying the stuff at the yeah. links or using products, all helps yeah. Ju Linux. But the best way I know of is to go to Patreon and give a monthly amount. It, it doesn't have to be a lot, you know. It can be five dollars, ten dollars, twenty-five dollars. If you're able to give more, great. You know, and if it's not a huge deal to you and you're enjoying using your software, then that's great, you know, so. Yeah, yeah any um, any little amount you guys can give us helps. And I have a Patreon, too, so I yeah. might send that suggestion to, and I might even include that in the show notes later, to sort of give me something, too, because, you know, yeah. I'm just a broke college kid, guys, who lives at home with his parents. I can't really be doing this crap for free all the time. So, yeah, yeah, whatever you guys can give us is totally fine. Uh, every little bit helps towards the creation of this distribution. So, yeah. Yeah, I take care of a 89-year-old lady, you know, that has uh, disabilities and has to be mm -hmm. cared for. And so, um, so, you know, this is really my only income as well, is doing this and some property inspections part-time. And that's about it. Yeah, so. and I do uh, I do tech support for people part time. You know, very rarely, but still, I do I do do it. And I don't really get a lot of compensation for it. I mean, I make a little buck here and there, but mm -hmm. you know, I really just don't get much for it. I mean, I get the satisfaction from other people, but I don't really get much out of it. So it's, every little bit you guys can donate to our causes helps. So. Yeah, and I mean, I, w I do have, you know, by diagnosed by the state of Kentucky, I do have uh, autism, you know, Asperger's, which is a handicap and a disability, but still, you know, <laughs> I don't really get much, you know, compensation, so, anyway, yeah, learn. Someone, like someone is asking if we can show them how to back yeah. up their bookmarks in their browser oh. so that they can, when they install okay. Jane Linux. Well, that's really easy. If we go to, um, let's see, start, and start menu right here, we go to internet, my mouse crop, right? Firefox. I'm gonna show you this in Firefox, but it's the same basic process. So we go to start new uh, bookmarks, and we go to the, uh, uh, stupid, stupid Firefox, okay, view. Show all bookmarks, and then if you want to export them, uh, you gotta go to all bookmarks, import and backup. You gotta export, and then let's just say you want to save it on the desktop because that's usually where I save things. Usually, yep. you put it wherever yep. you want. Or a jump drive. Where are we gonna back it up to? Um, well, I usually back stuff up to my Google Drive, but it yep. really depends. Um, so we'll put it to bookmarks, HTML. We'll just call it. Right there. Okay. So, and you can back that up to anywhere. You just have to browse for it. And then, yeah, that's basically how you back up your bookmarks. And you can show them how to do it in uh, Chromium and in Mozilla uh, browser. It's pretty much the same. It's a little bit different in each one. And, and you restore yeah. it the same way. Oh, you go we, into the same we thing. We want to go to Chrome. Um, come on. It's starting for the first time, and you're doing your updates, so. Yeah, your software is up to date. Yeah, and the best part is, folks, you, uh, it's the only time you'd have to reboot your Linux system is for update. That's for a kernel update. A kernel update. Everything else is fully up to date, and you don't have to worry about a reboot. Nothing. The only time you gotta do that is like with a, a video driver or uh, or like drivers um, or you know. Uh, Okay, so now we have virtual Chrome. Machine. You re update your virtual machine, you need to reboot. Yeah, okay, so we're going to say no thanks to that right now. Yeah, we're not going to do that. So you have what open on the left and the right? The same the Chromium and Chrome? Yeah, Chromium and Google Chrome. Yeah. Okie dokie. Well, you can import them in Chrome because Chrome doesn't yeah. have it. So well, What we're going to do is we're going to click Input Bookmarks. 
And actually, this is really helpful because if you go into Firefox here or whatever, show them how to do it from the file because we yeah, just so we'll go to bookmarks from file, choose, and then we go on the desktop where we export it from Firefox and we click open. So now that you've imported your backup, you don't have to worry about anything there. They're all in there, and you don't have to worry about nothing. So that's really go. easy. And then if you want to export them, trying to remember where the heck that it's is. Be under the menu somewhere in the yeah, upper right-hand corner. We go to the menu here. Bookmarks. Bookmarks. Okay. And then what we want to do is go to input bookmarks and settings. Which doesn't you know, I mean, I No, you need to go to the bookmarks manager. If manager. you want to export, you always go to the bookmarks, bookmarks manager. Bookmarks manage. Okay, yeah, folks, you see this would be a pain in the neck for a user to find. So we go to here. Yep. Uh, and now we gotta find out how to export. So that little button probably does it. Here export it bookmarks. Export bookmarks. Bingo. Then, yep, and then you go down to here and we can put it in the same place. There you go. So now you've figured out how to do it in Google Chrome or Chromium. Same thing. So we get out of that. The only thing we didn't show is Mozilla Sea Monkey. So we Might as well. Sea Monkey. And then it has the same file. So we go to Bookmarks. Pretty much the same thing. Bookmark Manager, just like in Firefox. So once you click Bookmark yeah, Manager, you should be able to see. Yeah, bookmarks. There you go. Yeah, yeah so you don't have to actually do it. All Monkey is, it's an open source version of Firefox. So we go into here. Well, it's actually Netscape Navigator just yeah, updated. It's, it's an updated version of Netscape. So yeah, and then we uh, export. Yeah, we don't need to do it because we just showed them all. Bookmarks. Yeah, so given we have the same file, I'm going to call this bookmarks one. Yeah, this is the same. Yeah. And then it's the same file, so I just put a one after it. Yeah. And the import, you can see how to import here tool, so yeah, everything, is, can, yeah, everything's the yeah. same. Okay, so everything's the same, so we'll close out a monkey here. And there you go, that's how you do it in all three browsers. Okay. Okie dokie, so we need to reboot because we did our updates and we did our yeah, finishes. Now we're going to restart, so we go up here to the menu, the little power thingy here. And then we hit res. Oh, hit the cancel button by mistake. So, oh no, restart. Okay, now it's rebooting the virtual computer here. Yes. And um, yep. So now it's booting back in really quick. Yes. And we have no more errors. So there you go. Now the next thing we should probably show you is there's no games in here what the crap well uh if we've installed if we have installed uh play on linux then there should oh, be yeah, there is play on linux. okay, okay just, so where is it going to be is it going to be in our accessories or we don't know yeah, typing it's it in? Under, yeah it's in our accessories okay i got it. it they moved it so yeah we go to play on linux there you go and it's going to refresh the play on linux repos and then we'll be good Yep, they changed their mind about where they wanted it to be. Yeah, it used to be under gaming, but now they. Yeah, it's probably the play on Linux people themselves that did it because the package when you install it, it decides where it's going to go. So. Yeah. It is refreshing play on Linux, which means, as far as I know, it is um, downloading information from the official play on Linux server, which does not always work. Sometimes they have issues in the yeah, past. Sometimes you have to change the wine version manually, but that's. Not and then once it's done that, then you can hit install and it will show a huge list of pre programs that it will install for you. Yeah, but you can also well, install other programs that aren't in the list. So, yeah, it's, it's and I will tell you that some games like MMOs and things that you do play, some of those will require money to be played. But if that's the case, you're going to have to sort that out later. But. I don't want to make anybody upset or step on anyone's toes that's listening, but see, me personally, I switched to Linux. I don't have to pay for, you know, uh, Office or any of that kind of stuff anymore. So um, I, I view video games personally, me personally, as, you know, I'm not getting a lot of other things done, like making JU Linux yeah. or, you know, making videos, this sort of thing. And so, um, you know, it, it just it's your perspective. It's what you want to do with your time and your money yeah, and your energy. Exactly. So, okay, so yeah, Play on Linux is almost refreshed. And, yep. uh, but I do have a gaming YouTube channel. I do game in Linux from time to time. 
Yeah, I do it a lot more than he does, but... There you go. We're ready to install a program. Let me just... It okay. says so. Now, keep in mind, the virtual machine is probably not going to be nice to 3D games. Yeah, so we probably should install but, some a two-dimensional program. Yeah, I'm just going to see what all can run briefly. I'm not going to go... Too yeah, just by hitting install. That should that should help us. You know, let me click install program. I'm gonna Thank see. you. It's, I think it's still... Is it still loading it or not? No, it's good. Okay. Now, the game I'm going to install is Knights of the Order Public. I have doesn't always... that require DirectX and 3D stuff that doesn't work in the VM? Well, uh... I have been able to run this a little bit in wine. I'm not sure how well it'll run. I'm talking about the virtual machine. It yeah. will not support 3D games. That's what I'm trying to um, say. Um, What kind of game can we get? We don't have to install a game. We could install a program. It doesn't matter. We're uh, just using uh, let's an internet see. browser or anything. Yeah, let's see what we can get. There um, you go. We could install Internet Explorer just for fun. I don't uh, know if it'll work. Let's try Apple. <laughs> I'm kind of, I'm kind of, let's try Safari just for fun. Yeah, just that probably will work better. You've got a five out of five. Go hmm. for it. Hit it okay, I'll give it a try. <laughs> I so now, well, I am somewhat of a Mac OS user, so let's try this. I'm half. I'm kind of curious. All right. I, Next, I think we should try Internet Exploder just to see if it explodes. Internet Explorer? Oh, my God. Well, I don't know. We should try it just to see what it does. I wonder if they have... What is, what's the new version of Internet Explorer called? It's not Internet Explorer uh, anymore. Uh, Microsoft Edge. Yeah, maybe they've got that in there. We should look and see. I, I didn't see it, man. No. <laughs> <laughs> I did not see it, but I am half tempted to download it and try it under Wine. We would have to look on Wine HQ. I'll do that really quick while you're doing this. I'm gonna uh, look up Wine. Yeah, show so people how to use it. Tell you what, show you show people how to use Wine HQ. I'm gonna search for Wine HQ. Right, right. Microsoft Let's, Edge. Oh Let's search Linux Microsoft Edge. Okay. Wine, uh, Wine HQ space on. Microsoft space Edge. Yeah, I'm looking it up. Hold on. I usually just go to directly to Wine HQ. Oh, they've got a new version. Okay. Let's search uh, Microsoft. Edge. Well, I've got three people watching this. Nice. And there is. Uh, uh, Maybe just wow, put it it's edge. not even. It's not even listed. Well, okay, then just search for for how to run Microsoft Edge on Wine. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll find it. Run Microsoft Edge on Wine. Wine Linux. That's what I'm putting in. Oh, okay, Wine. Well, ask you button to. They're usually pretty good. Uh. Uh, oh, they tell you to run it in a VM. Those buttheads. It says yeah. here that it says here you can try it, but it says nobody has done it yet on the Wine HQ site. Is what it says. Yeah, I'll just give it a try. If it doesn't work and craps out, then we won't work. We, we know that the Microsoft Exploder thing has a chance. We don't know about Edge. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think while you're doing this, I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to go to the bathroom if you want to continue I'll, for just a minute or two. I'll entertain whatever we've talked about. Okay. Dance in front of your webcam. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh. Yeah, guys. Um, anything else? Whoa, crap. Uh, let's just... so yeah, guys, is there any other program you might want to see in this uh, live stream? Let me go back over to the chat.
Find it, okay. Well, oh, they can't make this. Alright, guys, I'm trying to. There's the light. Okay. Yeah, 10x. Uh, yeah, to answer your question. What is there for? Uh, well, that is a very good question. Yeah, uh, to answer Tenex's question, okay, I would recommend a separate hard drive for Windows and Linux. Uh, I would not recommend putting both on one hard drive solely because it can cause more problems than it's worth. So I would strongly, strongly advise putting Linux on a separate drive. So, I just had better luck doing it. All right. Welcome back, Justin. So, you're still installing Safari? Yes, um, I'm gonna say download the program for me. That's yes. how I usually do it. Usually the story me, Downloading the Safari exit. You haven't had any errors, so it should work. Theoretically. Yeah, theoretically it should be okay. Now there. It says, uh, deselect install Bonjour Windows and automatically update. Yeah. Do um, so you have to uncheck both of those after you click next? Yeah, okay. I will make sure to do that. That shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> Please wait for Siri. Uh, Safari. Oh, uh, Safari. Yeah, we should install Siri. And you what's can't. The, <laughs> you have what's to install. The, you have to install iTunes to do that. Oh. Okay, so let's try to run it. We're gonna run Safari. I'm scared now. <laughs> I could never ever get so far any Apple program to run under one. I see. Well, you told it to run. It's not giving you an error. Maybe you need to click on it and play on Linux and hit run. I don't know. Yeah, let's just try that. Uh, or you might need some patience because it might take a while for it. To it. Yeah, let's see. It crashed. Oh, no. Well, that's a bummer. Let's try iTunes. Yeah, I think that's probably going to break, too, especially if it's an old version. Uh, it says two stars. Two stars. Yeah, two stars. This one has two stars. Uh, yeah, iTunes does not work with one. Syncing iPhones does not work. Okay. Well, this yeah. should work. It says syncing with iDevices doesn't take, but everything else I'll works. tell you one program that works really well. Yeah, it's called. Um, let's see if I can look it up. It's one I use all the time. It's called Levelator Two, L E V E L A T O R Two, and it runs oh, right on Wine, no problems. Yeah, it's, we'll it's, try that. Um, I use it to. Uh, it, it fixes the audio in YouTube videos. Is what it does. Right. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, You have to click next for something to happen. Right, right, right. Okay, sorry. It must be multitasking. Uh, you need the 32-bit installer. Yes. Go. Okay, it's downloading its version of Wine. 
Let's see what the heck this does. What are you trying to install this time? Um, I am trying to install iTunes. Yes. And see, it might try to automatically update, too. I hope not, but we'll find out. Um, if it does automatically try and update, that's not a problem. But hopefully it doesn't work that way. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to see if there was a Microsoft Edge. Yeah, we can try that. that There's another. I don't know that we should on the video. Yeah. That I think that might be its own little video. Yeah. How can um, I use Edge with Linux? Let's see, when was this done? Yeah, I don't think it's going to work. No, nah, I don't think it will. Oh. Oh. And it says... See if I can find Win Songs ninety five. Okay, so it is downloading, downloading okay. Wine Mono. We don't want Mono. Mono is a bad disease. Uh, wine Mono 4.5.6. And Mono, basically, from what I know, has something to do with HTML stuff. Yeah, which is needed for a lot of Windows programs. So. Mm -hmm. And in Linux, there is a lot of things called demons, programming demons. We don't like demons or Mono. Too bad no, we things. Don't. <laughs> don't want to get electronically transmitted diseases uh, from Microsoft. Uh, As I try to run my programs with Windows 95, <laughs> Megs was wrecked. Yeah, can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine running Windows 98 nowadays? You'd be like asking for trouble. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Yeah, but, but it would be very as secure as. I don't even know how to run XP nowadays because if you install a new version of XP, it like it's like I can't connect to the internet because I don't have updated software. Yeah, uh, it's nuts. Okay, so here's iTunes, and I think I know our problem. Uh -oh. oh my word, we're not running the latest wine in this wine bottle. Oh, but my. it says you're not supposed to. It says 1.7.48 is what you're supposed to use. Well, so. you, see, you see, I've tried that before, Justin. And well, now, wait a minute. The newest version of Wine is installed on the system, so why does it have to download right. it? Well, you see, that's native Wine. It doesn't like that. It wants to run the newer one. Yeah, you see, it doesn't work that way. You have to download it manually within Play on Linux for the program to recognize it. That's the problem. Well, yeah, but you're supposed to be able to just select it from a list, and if it's natively installed, you aren't supposed to have to download it and install it. I don't know. But once you download it and play on Linux, you don't have to download it again, so. Uh, well, problem is, uh, uh, 
Right. So you have to. You have to. It's halfway done. But yeah, it should. Look at the statistics on SourceForge.net for JLinux. Will it tell me without logging in? I wonder. It says this week there are 54 people that downloaded the JLinux 64 bit and uh, three people download 32 bit, and there's a huge spike in the number of downloads, so we should expect it to increase. We have uh, the 16 version, there were 21 people that downloaded that, and uh, yeah, so people are, are downloading Linux. I'm gonna look at the statistics. So, on what date is this? On uh, yesterday. It jumped up from four downloads a day to 42. So I don't know why, but it did. We used to have a thousand downloads a day when we first started. It was pretty awesome. What? So we're still live and we've lost Ben. How can we lose Ben? I better tell Ben to come back. Ben, we've lost you. Ben, we have lost you. Rejoin. Ben has, has vanished. Can I invite him to the to the thing? No. Okay, I'm I'm going to tell Ben. Let's see, I have a telephone here. Oh, Ben's back. Ben is back. His, it says he's back, but I don't hear him or see him. Ben, come back to us, Ben. Let's see if I can. Oh, Ben is back. He's mm. back. Where the heck is my? Okay, yeah. My internet took a huge nosedive for a second. I see. It was now we're seeing forums solved masking KD5 oh, oh, oh. plasma five. Why did this have to oh I should you're not clicked oh, on the virtual oh, box? Yeah. Oh I hate it when I do that. Okay. Let's see. Virtual box. Thank you. There he is. Okay. So we are downloading wine 3.12, 24.1 of like three so. point something, and you canceled it? Yeah, I had to restart the uh, download because, like I said, my internet took a huge nose dive. I see. And there is a Perils command in... Of, yeah, Perils of Net Neutral. Oh, crap. There is a, a command in Linux to download something, um, and it will keep downloading even if it gets interrupted. It will... It will uh, I don't know. Um, let's I think it's wget. Wget is the command. Yeah, that might have to happen. And then it will download... I, you yeah, might have made uh, it angry uh, now. Uh, You've made it uh, angry. Yeah. Ben, why did you anger the play on Linux? Why? I don't know. I mean, it, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think you need to delete the cached uh, play on Linux that downloaded, and that's yeah. going to be the dot .play on Linux directory in your yeah, owner I don't know folder. what it's going to do. Uh, I, think, I think you need to yeah, go to your I owner actually, folder. Actually, you know what? I think I might have to restart. I don't think that's going to help. Well, I think you have to go into your dot .play on Linux directory and delete the cached version that it downloaded because it's broken. Uh, and it will re-download it. And it's not going to re-download it until you get rid of the broken part. Broken. Okay. I'll, I'll do that once it reboots. You broke it. Yeah. All right. What I'll do just to make Justin happy is to go start her home. And I'll... Dot. 
slash dot dot. A on. Oh, you didn't capitalize. It won't find it. Yeah, there it is. There you go. We might right. need to see other uh, if hidden it's, files. I don't know. We might need to yeah, see hidden files. Yeah, there is one there. Okay. okay, so temporary would be where it would be. Oh. Uh, now we're done. There's oh. temporary file. Okay, and then I'll just... Now do we see it? No, it's not there. Yeah, there's, there's... Oh, we found it. Oh. Good. Move to the trash. trash. There we go. Now it should be I'll happy. I'll click and do the trash. Oh. Yes. Oh, now wow. Now Linux should be happy because we have removed the junk. Because we removed the junk file, yeah. Yes. Oh, do, 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 do. so you need to restart to play on the next program. Yeah, and it's not getting back on the virtual. Oh, oh here. It's not online. Yeah, I'm it trying. Seems like, a, seems like a dream I had. <laughs> like deja vu. Yeah, I'm waiting for it to reconnect, if it ever would. Um, the connection bug network. I was going to set it to net. Maybe that'll work. Okay. Let me reboot it. Again? Yeah. Maybe it's the virtual machine program itself that's having yeah, issues. That that be internet. Nice. You may need to close the virtual box. Uh, I might. Because you're using the Microsoft virus to make this work. So. Yeah, that, that may be a bad idea. You're supposed to put Windows into the recycle bin and just yeah. use the X. That's what you've got to do. So, we're going to restart play on Linux. Is your internet working? Yes, it is working. Yes, finally. Okay, see, Ben always comes around. Okay. See, folks, this is typical Microsoft crap. Okay, install a program. Now let's. Oops. That's wrong. You were trying to install iTunes 12 before. I was trying before. to install iTunes before all this mumbo jumbo happened. Okay. 3.12. Now, in this case, I am going to have to download the iTunes executable manually, but that's okay. There it goes. Yes, and it's a heck of a lot faster now. Okay, so we're going to go to iTunes.com slash download. And I'm going to download the 64-bit iTunes. That might break it. it might well, if it do doesn't that. work, then we'll try the 32-bit. So I don't know. Oh, see, it said 12, version 12. What version are you doing? Yeah, well, well, it should just get the latest version. Okay. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. We don't know. See, sometimes with these things, if it says it's 12, it only works with 12. We're about to see. Okay. It's done. All right. Now we're going to close out of this. Sometimes these tutorials involve them. Okay. Okay. 3.12. That's what we need. Okay, it's done. Now, if I'm going to open this download, right. this. and found it. Yes. Now let's see. Hey, there goes something. Huh. See, it says 32-bit on the thing you selected on the yeah, virtual machine. Well, I don't know if this is going to happen, but we'll see. You might have had to have changed it to 64, but again, it says it's only supposed to work in 32, so. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, okay. Fine. Install. I can't move your mouse for you. No, I don't. I got it. Okay, install. All right, it's distracted. Fine. Uh, is it the woman in the red dress from the Matrix? Is that it? <laughs> oh man, come on! All that right. might be it. Error! You've crashed it. You've made it mad. Oh yeah, it said yeah, iTunes yeah. twelve thirty two bit. Right, right, right. I'll get thirty two bit though. 
And now you might have corrupted the whole directory for, uh, well, no, because it's 32 bit. 32 bit might not might not be angry that you tried to put 64 bit. Yeah, it's bit. downloading the 32 bit. It doesn't say 32 bit. So once it's 64, the other one doesn't say anything. No, the other one says nothing. So Yes, that's how you tell the difference. Again, I guess the only reason you'd want iTunes in Linux is so that you have access to your media that you purchased yeah, online. Yeah, you downloaded, yeah. See, I, I should grab, I know I have a CD somewhere around here right next to me, but when I purchase music, I get it on this new invention called the compact disc. And then when I put it in my computer, it's on my computer and it's on the disc. It's not out on iTunes. It's not on iTunes. Let me, let me go look at the chat to see if anyone's talking about anything. It's amazing. And I was removed from the chat for some stupid reason. Uh, all right, I'm back in the chat. There hasn't been any new messages, at least from what I can see. iTunes is completed. We're ready to install. But, all right. So I will open. The, I will clear the Firefox previews. All right. Open. We are going to run an EXE. Yep, I'm going to open. You know what EXE must stand for? Explodable. What? Explodable. Explodable. Oh, Lord. It's supposed to be executable. Yeah. Okay. So, computing space requirements. Yeah. We got, See, there we, we go. go. <laughs> See, when we follow the instructions, things work. Okay. So, next. We must go next. Yep. I got it. Okay. Continue. Add yeah, iTunes. I have it okay. We don't want updates. No, because then it'll screw it up. That's what it says, anyway. Install. And it says auto run is turned off. Do we want it off? I think we should have it on. I guess. Well, if it's on, it might. I don't know. Hopefully, I don't it won't explode. Uh, it means really when you stick a disk in the drive, and you try to open it, it's going to try to open it with that program. Right. I don't know if that actually is going to work, but. Well, we'll try it. <laughs> I, I don't think so. I think I think Wine will auto play, not Linux. I think it's going to. We're removing files. That's how you know you've installed something is when you're removing files, right? Right, I would think. We're copying yeah. the new files, so evidently it's removing the 64-bit and installing 32, I'm guessing. All right, let's see what the heck happens here. Should load. And we can continue. Okay. He's, he's installing the explodable EXE. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to stream out. <laughs> You can also install MSI files as well. Yeah, that's that's what I'm gonna test next. I'm gonna test the Microsoft what? Invasion MSI. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, it's making the link. It says finish. All right. We finish. Um, we finished the installation. Okay, let's. And now we're gonna open it, and it's going to. All right. So I'm gonna click finish on this. It should on. make our icon now. Oh, it's mad at you, and it didn't uh, make an icon. Well, that's easy to fix. We can go into make a shortcut, and it's doing a little spinning. Yeah, oh. just like an apple. Yeah. And it's scanning the virtual disk. Yes, it's scanning for executed for explodables. Yeah, <laughs> okay, there you go. You can browse or you can select one yep. of those in the list. Oh, so I'm gonna pick the iTunes EXE because that's what we're gonna, Yep, we're gonna pick that. We're gonna call it iTunes. Just to make it simple. Hey, look, it gave it a pretty icon. Yeah. You made it look beautiful, but you didn't put it on your desktop. It's going to. It's just loading it. All right. There's the iTunes icon, so we're good ah. here, and I can close out of this. And I'll wait for that. And then we'll open. It. All right. Oh, what the hey? You made it angry again. Yeah. Well, I was afraid of that, so unfortunately, I guess. Whatever. And that's why, in general, you want to let it download whatever it's trying to install. So yeah. if it wants to download iTunes 12, you let it download iTunes 12 itself. Yeah, that was iTunes 12, but it's not... But it's a newer version. It's point right. twelve point eight. Right. Uh, 
don't know what version of iTunes it was looking for. That's the problem. I don't know either. Well, you know what? But that is how you install Windows programs on Linux, the explodables, yeah. EXE. So I'm going to get rid of these things because they are not working. Because they're exploding. Yeah, because they're being stupid and not cooperating. But, I don't use well, I don't get it either. But I'm going to have to try to do a video on my own of installing Internet Exploder. <laughs> Uh, let's see if even that will work really quickly. Okay. Internet this, it hardly ever works, but you could give it yeah. a try. What's the, what's the, what does it right. say on the right side? Four stars. Yeah, I got okay. four stars. Okay, okay. Let's, try this. Let's, let's do this. Do not let's... remind me again. I hate <laughs> All right, it's installing. It says it is. Now, this time we're not going to tamper with anything. We're just going to let okay. it do what it wants to do. Downloading line 1.7. Yep, that's what it wants to use. So let's let it do that. That's okay, so it shouldn't be a problem. Yep. Um, it... yep. This is going to be funny. I don't know if it works. What I used to love to do with this in Linux is go to windowsupdate.com and it would try to install Windows updates on Linux. That doesn't work anymore. Uh. But it was always funny. We are installing Mono MSI. See, MSIs and Explodables both work on. All right. Now, I, I, I'm pretty confident that Exploder will at least open for you, but I don't know what else it will do after that. It should. All right. I, I don't know if you'll be able to use it to do anything. I'm pretty sure if you go to YouTube, it's just going to freak out. It's like going to uh, spaz out. Microsoft fonts are not installed. We installed them. Go ahead and hit yes, next. We did. Okay, let's click next. Yeah. You have to accept the death certificate from yes, Microsoft. There you go. Did. I got it. Death warrant. <laughs> Installing fonts. Look how slow Microsoft server is to download yeah, the fonts. It's, 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 it's terrible, man. <laughs> and you wonder why those Windows updates take forever. Now, last I heard, the rumor has it that Microsoft is using a Linux server for the Windows updates, but I, I'm not so sure about that. I'm not so sure on that. Because I think, I think it would work faster and better. If, yeah, I agree highly. Oh. They're probably using some sort of encrypted connection to the Windows update server. Yeah, I would assume they are. Okay, I'm it's cleaning up. Oh, look. Now it's Progress down. bar jumps. Yes, an XP file. It's uh, just like Windows. The progress bar just jumps at the last minute. Please wait. Uh, hmm. hmm. Please wait while Play on Linux is installing. Please wait. It keeps saying, please wait. Yeah. We're waiting. Now, are we going to be rewarded? <laughs> it's getting hotter in here. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to check on the cooler. It might have been turned down. That's installing XML3. I'm hearing noises that don't sound good. I better get up for a minute and check. Are you in there? Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, it's still oh. loading. It's still on the server. Back on. Internet Exploder oh. 8 is exploding. Oh. Yeah, Justin's getting all excited. <laughs> yeah, because it's exploding. That's what we want. We want Internet Exploder. Uh, okay. All right, two. Uh, it says. Oh, I thought it said it is installed. Uh, okay. It does. It says wait while Internet Explorer is installed. Right, exactly. Uh, My, uh oh, I'm hypnotized. I'm looking at that thing. It's spinning, and I think <laughs> I'm under its control. <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah. It must install Windows. Must install Microsoft. Oh, God. Justin's getting attacked by the Microsoft hypnosis. <laughs> That's what the Windows updates do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, man. Ah. Uh, Huh. Now, if I can just actually type properly on my keyboard. It's very hypnotic. Yeah. Why? Oh, no. It pulled up, but it failed again. The, the, mm. the installer came up, but wine is being crisp. Well, I don't see anything coming up. I just see it's yeah, trying it to... Oh, you canceled. Off. See, it looked like it was working. Right, but the problem was it was using the wrong version of wine again. You say so? Yeah. Just, it looked like I didn't see any error. I, I just saw yeah, it working. The problem was it wasn't working properly. Okay, okay. So I'm going to go back to the internet and download the executable like I was trying before. Oh, boy. Not, now if I can actually type internet explore 8. eight. Download. Okay. Let's see. From official <laughs> Microsoft Download Center. Yeah. Has to be a 32 bit, uh, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. For Windows Server for 64 bit. No, we don't want that. Uh, for Vista, probably for Vista. Yeah, we'll try that one. Do we want it to be 32? Yeah, uh, okay, it's downloading it right now. It's 13.3 megabytes, so it's got to be a bad sign. Yeah, it shouldn't be. Okay, run a dot execute. Okay. But did it download yet? Yes, it did. Okay, we're going to open this. My next experiment will be to install Microsoft Edge in J17. <laughs> 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 the problem is I don't know what it wants. I don't know yeah. what Edge wants. Like, no, 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 no. Okay, shut up. See, that's why you should have just let it do its thing. Well, see here, we can go and configure Wine until it's run in Windows Vista. Oh, okay, if that's the problem. Yeah, and it wants to run in XP, okay, we're going to tell it to run through Windows 7, because Windows 7 is a newer version. And it's better compatibility. Yeah, all right, so we're going to try this again. Run. Run, stupid Internet Exploder. Oh. It's not support. What did it say? It's not supported what? It's not supported on this version. Okay, okay go back to Vista. Okay. Tell it that we're Windows Vista. Yep, yeah, we're going to tell it to run in Windows Vista compatibility mode. Okay. Vista. There wow. we go. Okay. Try it again. If it likes this idea. If. <laughs> no, it could be mad that your uh, 64 bit download. It says, uh, what, do we, what does it say? Uh, Setup cannot. Con Let me read it. Setup cannot continue. Because one or more updates required to install eight, which you didn't let it do. Double click the Internet Explorer troubleshoot ah. shortcut. Uh, so we don't know what update it needs. If we knew what update it needed, we could do it manually and then it would install. Yeah, and that's it. why that's why you use Play on Linux and let it just do its thing until it's done. That's well, that's I'm why. Gonna, right, I got it. Okay, let's open up Firefox. This. Yeah. Oh God. All right. Yeah, just hit OK. Hit OK. It's spamming me. It's OK. OK, so we need Internet Explorer troubleshooting URL. So just open Firefox and put in Internet Explorer 8 troubleshooting. 
Yeah, that's Search. Wondering. Okay, let's let's try it on Chromium. Maybe it'll work. Cancel. Cancel. Yeah, I know. Cancel. It's duck duck going. Ding. Ah, it's just a. Okay, so just search for it instead of instead of. You can right click on that link to get the link. You can actually right click on hit properties. Right click. Get the actual link if that's your your problem. Now, yeah. now where's the I'm link? Going, actually, I'm gonna try opening this in a text editor just to see what the heck happens. Open it. Okay. With okay. Do it. Now. Now that. you'll have your link. And here's the URL. Okay. Yes. That's good to know. Okay. That's one thing I didn't think about. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is driving me nuts. Well, it's supposed to. It's Internet Explorer. Oh. The page was not found. It doesn't exist. Yeah, There's no okay, support. Okay. Microsoft uh, dropped support for Internet Explorer. Yeah, okay. Internet Explorer 8. 8. Or Windows XP. No, oh. it doesn't run on Windows XP. Uh, well, here it is. Major geeks. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, my word. They got to make this such a gosh darn tedious piece of crap. But it's still going to tell you that it needs an update before it's going to install. Right, 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 right. Okay, so we can go and find that on Microsoft's web server. And I have to download this. Oh, okay. There we go. So now it wants that. What is that that you're downloading? All right, let's try this IE update. Oh. So oh now boy. that is running. Oh, yeah, you forgot to set it back to freaking Windows XP. <sighs> well, that's an idea. Wow. I never knew XP was such a chore. Experimental prototype. Yeah, XP was a real pain in the rear. <laughs> it's an experimental prototype. Yes, it is. It was never really fully baked. That's the problem. Uh, who knew getting Windows things? Oh, oh shoot! I oh, don't I think this is gonna work. I, it says I have to install IE first before I do that. Okay. Yeah, I think it's gonna end in tears because I think that you should have hmm. should have let the Plan Linux installer do what it thought it needed to do to make it work. Maybe. Oh lord. Oh man. Okay, yeah, so. I I don't think this is going to work. Okay, screw that. We'll just try something else. Okay, let's try Steam maybe. Just to see. no, you don't install that in here. You just install that through the Snapdeck package. Well, manager. a lot of you games. You can do it here, well, but here's the thing: a lot of games that I run under Linux are. Oh, my uncle's calling me. Who's calling you? What? Hello. I want to mute yourself. <laughs> I am okay. How about you? Oh, don't want to do one of those bong gums. Mute. And while he takes a phone call, we'll continue installing Steam just to see how it goes. So how are you guys doing? Oh, hey. Sorry, guys. <laughs> this is so weird. Nah, yeah, it's okay, Farron. <laughs> Wish.
Oh, Farron. That's fun. Deal Street Lord, what the hell? That's terrible. Oh, man. So, Farron, how is your Ubuntu remix coming? Out of pure curious. Okay, let's see if we can install something in Steam without any errors this time. Street Lord. Oh, uh, E Street Lord. That's, that's, that's all. Well, this is a hard point video, right? And, yeah. Excellent. Okay, well, Steam seems to have installed without problems. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, um, well, uh, what's it currently based on then? Try running it. Oh, okay. Empty the trash. Mm -hmm. And we'll. Okay, let's run Steam as you requested. Let me just. Yep, Steam is coming up here, man. Oh, it's based on Mint. Okay, that's cool. Well, that's probably better than most else. And Steam is downloading the latest patches. Oh, it's unpacking the updates. Oh, wow. Hey, there's Steam. Not sure why this put on Linux error happened, but whatever. Okay, let's log in onto my account and see if we can maybe play a game. I don't know. Yeah, I gotta type in this silly access code. Jump. Uh, holy, a lot of email. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Um, Yes, evidently that is the case. Right. Yep. Yep. It looks like Steam is working, and I will. Yep. So now Steam should load up without any. Hello. Okay. My headphones on. Okay, Justin, sorry about that. Yeah, you had to, uh, I had to mute your microphone for a minute because it was, I didn't want the, I didn't want the audience to hear your and phone call. Yeah, because I didn't want to be rude to them and have them hear yeah. what you're talking about. So. Yeah, well, that's probably for the best. So did right. you get anything to, oh, you installed Steam in yeah, Linux. And I'm going to, 
Is it steaming? Yep. Now this is the Steam Windows client, so I don't know if the store will be accessible to us, but yes, it will be. And the thing is, all of your games will be accessible in the store. It will tell you anyway. Yeah, exactly, without any problem. I can't see it on mm -hmm. my end. It's still loading. The Steam store is still loading. So yeah, that's don't what get impatient. Doing. Don't get impatient uh, with it because. That's what happened to Internet Explorer 8, is it was yeah. trying to... Okay. So, I'm going to make this full screen. I'm just going to let it load and check if something works. I think I'm going to go ahead and start my virtual machine and download Edge into it, just so that yeah. I can try it later, just for yeah, fun. Just see if it loads, yeah. Just for fun. Uh, there it is. And the Steam web client is still taking forever to load. Okay, so I am starting. Oh wait, is this the 32 bits? I no, don't. it's it's 60. Oh, it's trying to boot from the. Okay, just a minute. Yeah. Oh, I think we're okay. I'm gonna devices, optical drives. Yeah. By the way, the Theron OS guy joined us. So. All right, let's go to library. Let's see if my friends list is available. Yay, my friends list actually freaking works awesome. Oh, let's see. Okay, yeah. I think VirtualBox mm -hmm. might be angry with me. Okay. Well, I can install... Um, let's see. What do we want to install? Definitely not going to do Mass Effect. Really? All right. Um, Something that's known to work in Steam on Windows what? and Linux. Okay. Well, let's try... Oh, this is a fun game, but I want to try some... There it goes. Huh. Let's try Knights of the Old Republic from way back in the day when you and I first started hanging out. Okay. My, uh... Server's unreachable. Yeah, okay. Uh -oh. That's a bad sign. Huh. My, uh, my virtual machine is up and going. I'm going to look for download Microsoft Edge. And I don't know if 32 bits available. Let's do... Well, I have to reopen Play on Linux now and try a newer version of Wine, maybe. Okay. Linux. This should be fun. <sighs> yeah, I like playing around like this. Okay. Yeah. Microsoft yeah. Edge. It says I have to have Windows 10 to download Microsoft <laughs> Edge. I don't want to do that. Let's Here we go. Microsoft Edge. It's going to improve my battery life, it says. Enjoy faster browsing. Help me choose. Hmm. I just want to get Edge. That's all I want. Hmm. For Windows 7? Did they make Microsoft Edge for Windows 7? That would be cool. That would be really nice, but I don't think that's... Well, it says Microsoft Community. Mm, maybe that'll work. Uh, I don't know. Microsoft is based on a totally better application format for Windows 10 than Windows 32, he says. It says it is not possible to install. Hmm. But you can upgrade for free. I want to download Microsoft Edge. Where yeah. can I download it? Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know if you even can. I think I found it. It's just download. Hopefully it's not some malware stuff. <laughs> it is from the Microsoft site. I mean, I can lie to Microsoft and tell them I'm running Windows 10. Yeah. That gets me to download it. Okay, important. Selecting language below is going to be important. Okay, so I'm downloading it. It's just yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank you for downloading it. Uh, save uh, file. God. Why does wine have to suck? I don't think wine sucks. I think it's it's the Microsoft software that's having issues. Yeah, that could be the case. Uh oh, it's a DOCX file. It's it's a how to get the most out of Microsoft Edge. It's not actual Microsoft Edge. Oh wait. We can download in Explorer, but we can't. Uh, let's get Microsoft Edge. 
Download does not start. Thank you for downloading, getting the most out of Microsoft Edge. I don't want to get the most out of it. I want to download it. Yeah. Well, that app did not work. What, uh, in Steam? Yeah, uh, Steam is... Microsoft Edge for Windows safe download. Yeah, Steam is not letting me install a darn thing. Download of... Microsoft Edge. You know what? I'm just going to install KOTOR from goodoldgames.com. That's how annoyed I am at this point. Because I have honestly no, uh, no flipping idea how else to make this game work. Because Steam is being retarded, so... Dog.com. <sighs> I don't think it's going to let me install. I don't think it's going to let me download Microsoft Edge, and I think that's the reason why. Um, I think that's the reason why it's uh, it's not something people have tried. It's because uh, you can't. Uh, get it. That is a drag, but it is what it is. It says your download has completed. Well, it did not complete because it didn't happen. So. I guess it must be a spam site because. Oh, and Justin, I forgot to tell you. And hey, uh, guess what? What? I think you can get it from download.com. That might help. Because I found I found a download.cnet. There it is, Microsoft Edge, but it says visit website. Oh. Maybe I need to boot into Windows 10 to download uh, Edge. I don't know. That could be the case. Visiting external download site. Yeah. Not happening. Yeah, they're very protective of their edge. They don't want people to yeah, get it. Yeah, they don't want people using it. It says Edge for doubt for Android. They have Microsoft Edge for for uh, Android. Okay, so that's why people aren't installing it. Well, I'll go ahead and try to install Internet Explorer eight, and I'm not going to mess with it like you did, and it might work. Yeah. I'm going to let it do its thing here. I'm going to have to go use the bathroom again. But while you're doing your games and stuff in Linux there, it says you're supposed yeah, to log I'm in. I'm seeing if this it, works. Yeah. Well, go ahead and see. I'm going to go use the bathroom real quick. It's supposed to. Uh, these external sites like this are supposed to work. I'll be right back. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, Farron. I mean, Microsoft Edge, unfortunately, it's a crappy browser. It just is. I'm just looking up my uh, my log.
can come back to the now. Yeah. Um, Games. Ow. Glasses. Oh. Okay. Let's sign it. Gotta love my last pass. Oh, oh man. Welcome back, Justin. Anything working? Um, uh, all I just remembered. <laughs> you can actually, you know what? If I download this manually, this game, I can turn this into a dev file that can run it. So I can actually turn this into a native Linux game that runs through the line. Just run. There you go. Yeah. So I'm going to look up games construct. So we'll go to Deadly. Okay. I can turn these installers into dead pack. Yeah. I'm actually kind of curious to show people how to do that. And folks, sorry this takes so darn long. Oh, bro. Um, now I'm going to download KOTOR 2 also. And these games got a lot of awards back in the day. Now in KOTOR 2, I will say there is a lot of missing stuff. Because the developers rushed it. So. Okay, so with mm -hmm. um, Internet Explorer on Play on Linux, it says yeah. versions seven through eight have three out of five stars. Uh, the versions before mm -hmm. that, you know, they've got like two stars. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm doing mm -hmm. it. I'm downloading the line one point seven point twenty two, and I'm just going to let this thing cook. I'm not going to get impatient. I'm just going to let it run its course, yeah, and I and we'll see. Run. We'll see what happens. Okay, then. So, yeah, what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm loading up the tutorial on Deadly Stream, which is a modding website, on how to set up KOTOR and KOTOR 2 on Linux. So, using the GOG version. And there is actually a script here that I will pull up in just a few minutes once it's done. Now. So, oh. All right, well. All right, so we are downloading Internet Explorer 8. It's 21.3 megabytes. Oh, no, Wine Gecko. Sorry, Wine Gecko is 21.3 megabytes. And it's actually going faster than I would expect for my DSL connection. My DSL connection is yeah, only three I have, I have I have cable with 300 megs of internet, guys. So what Justin's showing us is a lot slower than mine. Yeah, mine is three megs down and 600 kilobytes up. Now, if my Patreon people helped me out for like $190 a month, I can get uh, internet through the cell tower at 4G and it's up to 60 megs down and 60 megs up. Yeah. Then you I would have some you would have somewhat comparable connection to my home. I don't know if it actually will be cuz so many people use the tower, but um, cuz my phone used to be really really fast on 4G and now it seems like it sometimes is faster when I go to my DSL. So I don't know. Yeah. But they yeah, give me this well, thing they give you a thing, you point directly at the cell tower. Wow. Oh. That's I That's still like, remember when you made I still remember the day when you made your video using that military internet on eleven dot oh four making G Lynx nine. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Uh never mind. But yeah, I remember when you made J U Linux nine. Uh -huh. <laughs> that version was awful. I hate to tell you. 
I mean, it was rushed. It was crap. I mean, back when you had Jay Linux 8, you know, it was great. Everybody loved it. Uh -huh. I mean, you were getting thousands and thousands and millions of downloads of Jay Linux every day. So you're basically saying it was the difference between XP and Vista. Yeah, the way to look at Jay Linux and I was like the Jay Linux Vista of the distro. <laughs> Now we're downloading, uh, guess what? Okay, so I got to the part where we were waiting and it was just taking forever on yours and now it's going to the next download. It's getting all the next stuff oh, that... Uh, well, basically, I was too hasty. With it. I think so. Yeah. And I, that's, well, one thing, uh, that's one thing that gets a lot of people because I know a lot of people that know how to do computer stuff and when things aren't just like instantly working, they just go nuts and then it never happens and, you know, it's like, well, you know... That's the It says yeah, Microsoft fonts are not installed, but I already installed them. It's it's like every time I open play on Linux on mine, it keeps telling me the Microsoft yeah. fonts aren't installed. Yeah, we're doing that's it. So weird. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right. I don't know. So I'll do it just for fun, just to see if it's gonna work. Yeah, if it works, I'll try it again. But I won't be so. I have sixteen. New updates on YouTube. I wonder what's going on. Yeah, okay, so the smaller files are downloaded, but the other two have about 10 minutes to download. That's I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah. My YouTube video dashboard tells me that today we are or yesterday or whatever, we're getting more people watching and apparently more revenue. I don't know if it's going to make a big difference. Yeah. But... Um, Please wait while Play on Linux is downloading other stuff. Lots of other stuff. Yeah. MSXML3 is installed. All the important. See, it kept telling me there were updates you didn't have. Um, yeah, my YouTube revenue the last two days, the 17th and the 16th, is going up just a, a bit. I'd say maybe, I don't know, a couple of dollars or whatever from the days before. So maybe I'm going to get back up there and I'm going to have more income. I don't know. Yeah, it's still downloading both KOTOR installer binary files. Mm -hmm. uh, Mine is downloading and installing Windows XP Service Pack 3. Yeah, that's just the update file, not the whole operator. It's 316 <laughs> megabytes, which is a third of the size yeah. of a CD disk. Yeah. Remember, that's Windows XP is on a CD. Yeah, and that's like over 500 megs. <laughs> so, uh, here we go. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm playing a little game while we wait for the downloads to finish. Well, anytime you're using Microsoft, you're playing a game. Right, that's the only actual reason that I use Windows these days. Well, I mean, you're playing game because you don't know what's going to happen next. It's an adventure. Right. Right. I am an adventurer. That's why I run Gentoo as my daily Linux, because I like tinkering and playing around an adventure. We are still downloading Service Pack 3 from Microsoft Server. You know, I doubt my yeah. internet connection is slower than the speed we're getting from Microsoft Server. So it's probably not going to take me any longer than it took you. Uh, to download the uh, update file, yeah. yeah. Somewhere I have yeah. a Service Pack 3 update disk. Because that uh, was a thing. That was something that Microsoft, yeah. you could download it. Because they wanted everybody to have Service Pack 3. So that the NSA yeah. prison uh, people no. could... Huh? <clears throat> yeah, that's the funny part, is that... They enforce Service Pack 3 on XP, but they <laughs> they don't enforce it on Windows 10, which is really freaking weird. 
Well, I don't think Windows 10 has Service Pack 3, does it? No, uh, Windows 10 is just Windows 10, and they were the regular scheduled release in the rules. That's it. Now, where the crud is... Yeah, I'm just playing Star Wars Galaxies, which originally released in 2001, to, or maybe 2000. So it's like... Uh... See, I see, I see. I am playing Total Domination in Linux on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of curious to see if this original KOTOR game and the second one will run under uh, Wine. <laughs> because I've, I've gotten it to work a couple times, but... Uh, uh. How many people are watching your stream? Two. So we are getting a couple of people. I see. So we are uh, getting some people. I'm just surprised how many people you had that uh, watched your other hangouts on your channel. My yeah, my jailbreaking live stream and all those other things. I mean, in that stream, I had like over 50 people. In which stream? My iPhone hacking stream. Oh, you're doing a phone hack. Yeah, I was trying to jailbreak. My phone was just kind of like rooting on Android. And I had like... I had like over 50 some odd people in there. Yeah, there's a lot of people that want to rip their phones. Yeah. I, uh, it's so I easy have... to turn your phone into a brick though doing that. Yeah, well I got mine to work. But it was no fair detail. Right, let me chrome. go. No base, no session. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we've got a minute and a minute and a half left on the Kotor 1 download and then the Kotor Express for that stuff. I should probably go over and check out my uh, Windows 8 installation and see how it's going. But I'm busy yeah. playing a game on Facebook at the moment. Yeah. They'll probably be done by the time I get done doing this. Um, ah, can't type today. That's probably something I should do on my laptop out there is resize my partitions because using Linux in live mode because uh, I got Windows 7 installed on there and uh, I don't really use it. Yeah, I don't really use Windows on any of mine either, but all they really use it for is school-related tasks, and that's about it. I can just do that in Linux, so. And I use it to play AAA title games, but that's not really something I do a lot, so. It says, wait while it is installed, which is where you gave up. Yeah. So I will wait while it is installed. Uh, I
time. Oh, mother of golly. All right, so let's go back. Yay, KOTOR 1 is done. No, no, no. Now, KOTOR 2 is almost done, which is a good thing. And then we get to see... Okay guys, so we finished downloading the two files. Now we can see if dog is working line. And I need to Oh snap, I closed my buttons. Okay guys, well we're gonna go ahead and shut this down, the stream. We hope you enjoyed learning how to play around and use J Linux. Um hope you got something out of it. And we will see you again in our next one. Thank you. All right. Bye.